The Braves acquired Jared Kelnick and Brewers top prospect Jackson Chorio has signed an eight-year extension. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Tuesday, December 5th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White, and your Atlanta Braves have been very busy so far this offseason, Scotty. They acquired Jared Kelnick, Marco Gonzalez, and Evan White for two pitchers, Jackson Kawar and prospect Cole Phillips. Looks like the Braves took on some bad money here, Scott, for the opportunity to develop a former top prospect in Jared Kelnick. And frankly, why wouldn't they? The Braves have done a great job developing hitters, Ronald Acuna, Ozzy Albies, Michael Harris, Austin Riley, the list goes on and on. Uh, mostly the career for Kelnick has not been good. There were some underlying signs this season that looked a little bit better. What are your thoughts on him headed to the Atlanta Braves? Well, it's certainly an, an interesting move. Uh, I, I He was such a highly regarded prospect just a couple years ago that it's surprising to see the Mariners pull the plug on him. And yet, to some degree, you can understand. Kelnick has been a gargantuan disappointment to this point. And they do save a lot of money in the deal. Uh, they, they did send some to the Braves to help offset it a, a little, but I think it comes out to basically they're saving 16, 17 million in 2024 and then 12 million in the years beyond that. So yeah, that's a decent amount of money to take on for the Braves to take this gamble on, on Jared Kelnick. And I kind of wonder if there isn't better ways they could have, spent that money rather than take this gamble on Kelnick. Clearly they have some degree of confidence in unlocking his potential. And as you mentioned, he did show signs of improvement this past year going beyond the surface level numbers. Jared Kelnick was no longer like an automatic out against sliders, no longer an automatic out against left-handers. And I think those are notable improvements and um, suggest growth on his part. Still only 24, it's worth pointing out. Did still strike out a lot, about 30% of the time. But specifically, I look at that Austin Riley uh, situation, Austin Riley's development as maybe a potential comp here for Jared Kelnick because he had major strikeout issues when he first got promoted to the majors that were undermining his potential. And Kevin Seitzer, longtime hitting coach for the Braves, worked a lot with him and, and was able to develop him into the stud he is today. Jared Kelnick was a much higher end prospect than Riley was back in the day and uh, hits the ball very hard like Riley has always done. So maybe Seitzer can fix him. And if that happens, it'll be a great deal for the Braves. It'll be a great development for fantasy. I think this trade is going to renew interest in Kelnick, in, in in leagues that require five outfielders. as a late-round pick, nothing more than that. But uh, just the change of scenery for somebody who carries as much name value as Kelnick does, and the fact he's going to be in a deeper lineup, the pressure's all off. Regardless of how Kelnick performs in 2024, I feel confident saying the Braves will have a top-three offense. Um Odds are against him, I think, becoming an impact fantasy player, but there seems like more of a chance now than there did prior to this trade. Yeah, and I would agree with that. The early ADP for Jared Kelnick, 229 as the 50th outfielder off the board. If everything works out, maybe he's a 15-15. If, if it really clicks, maybe we're talking a 2020 bat for Jared Kelnick in 2024. The other news, Jackson Chorio has officially signed the largest extension for a player yet to debut. Eight years, $82 million with the Milwaukee Brewers. And this past season, as a 19-year-old in the minors, Jackson Churio hit 282 with 22 homers, 44 steals, and an 805 OPS. Sounds like he'll have an opportunity to be on the opening day roster. In three drafts since the extension has an, was announced, Scott, Churio's ADP is up to 142. So up around 100 spots. As the 30th outfielder off the board, you say that's not high enough. Not high enough. I moved Oof. Jackson Chorio up to 21st Oof. in my Roto rankings, Spicy. 24th in head-to-head -head points. Uh, I think it's a foregone conclusion he makes the roster now. They don't have to worry about years of team control. All those years are accounted for now. And if they want him to score them extra draft picks, 
by where he finishes in awards voting in future years, he needs to be on the roster from the beginning to the end of his rookie season. That's the way it works. Jackson Chory is going to get the Brewers extra draft picks. So they have every incentive beyond just how he's going to perform for the big club to put him on the opening day roster. And uh, if, unless he falls flat on his face this spring, I think they will. And the upside is huge for Jackson Chorio. This is a transcendent talent, big power, big speed. Uh, he was playing at Double A last year as only a 19-year-old. And what really stood out to me for Jackson Chorio, okay, so prior to 2023, and it's 2022 season when he's still in the lower minors, Jackson Chorio struck out 26.9% of the time, pretty high, especially when he's facing mostly fastballs. He moves up to Double A. A lot more off-speed stuff, a lot more breaking balls. That strikeout rate drops to 17.8% for Jackson Choria last year. Huge improvement, even as the talent around him, around him improved. He was doing that at 19 again. So uh, love the upside for Chorio. And uh, at that point in the outfield rankings, you don't see a lot of upside left. So uh, I, I like Jackson Chorio just outside the top 20. All right, for more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again on Thursday. Bye-bye. 